Hi everyone, we are back and let's go ahead and look at more circle, a graphical approach. So if you look at these equations here, they have, actually specifically these, these are really functionally in the form of the equation that we have for a circle. And this was realized by um, Otto Mohr, who was an engineer, German engineer, I think in the 1800s. Um, ooh, excellent, I remembered it. Um, so you can kind of see, you can rearrange these equations to have a similar form as a circle. So you can actually visualize a plane stress state in 2D and look at normal stresses and shear stresses as circles. Um, so how do we do this? Well, we're gonna plot our normal stress on the x-axis, our shear stress tau on the y-axis. We're gonna use our tensor, which we're gonna actually go ahead and write this out right here, equals, uh, what is it? I think it's like 15, five, four on the sides. 15, yeah, exactly. So our stress tensor is 15, five, four, four, zero, 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 zero. So we're gonna treat these as basically coordinate system. So my X values are 15, 15 and five. Let me clean this up a little bit. 15 and five. My shear stress values are going to be positive four. And because of circular symmetry, we're also going to have a negative four here as well. And now I'm just going to treat these as coordinate systems. So I'm going to have a point here at five and positive four and negative four to do circular symmetry here and here. And I'm going to have a circle that basically, and again, it doesn't have, it doesn't really, we don't know where it's really ending. We're going to calculate that out in a second. A circle that's going to pass through each of these four points. Now, we need to draw a line that connects two of these points. Um, and the reason being is we're going to visualize, again, the stresses occur everywhere here on a circle, but they are going to be connected essentially from a line to put it in this 2D state. So when you're drawing a line, we're going to pick the smaller normal stress has the positive shear value. The larger will have the negative, so we're going to connect like this. And you can now see that we're going to have some angle here between here. Excellent. So we can now start to solve for those exact same questions. So we wanted to know what are what is our maximum or our principal normal stress state and what what's the angle that it took to get there? Well, we could do this quite easily. Um, if I am lying and I'm going to if I'm lying flat on this line here, and I have a point here and a point here, this is my sigma one, this would be my sigma two, and if I'm lying flat on this line, I have no shear stresses. Therefore, I'm in the principal stress state. So, we can calculate that right now. So I need to find what's the center of my circle, what's my radius, and I need to find this angle to figure out what's the angle to get that stress state. Well, we can do that by geometry. So. I could find the radius by taking the distance between those two points, divided by two. To find my center, I can fit a line here, and then I can solve for when that crosses the x-axis. So my center is gonna be at 10. So now I can add my sigma one here, if I figured out this is my center, so my center is equal to 10. My radius is equal to 6.403 something, which we'll come back to that in a second. But my sigma one will just always be center plus radius. My sigma two will be equal to center minus my radius. And when you do that, look at these values. 16.4, where have we seen that before? Oh, do you see sigma one right here? That's the value. What about sigma two? Sigma two is 3.5986. We got it. Fantastic. Now, what about this angle? Well, we can use a triangle, right? I'm trying to find this. I know that this is my radius. I know that this is what? It's gonna be four. So I can go ahead and solve. We can go over here. Oops. I'm gonna solve sine opposite over adjacent is gonna be four of my radius. 
19.3229. Where do we see, where have we seen that one before? Where is it? There's my angle. Same answer. But this is much more intuitive and we can actually do this. So we've got it. Now, the other question is asking us, well, what's the maximum shear stress state? Well, that would just be the highest value of shear, and that would be just the radius. And we said that the radius is, where's our radius? Radius is 6.403. This was our maximum shear stress, 6.403. What about the angle to get there? <laughs> so again, we're already, um, uh, now, one thing that I actually made a mistake here, this has got to be two theta. And we saw that, excuse me, um, we saw that in our sign here, two theta. Two theta because when we're converting those equations, you can actually look back in the plug and chug. When we're converting all of this, you see just this two theta, two theta, two theta that pops up over and over and over again. So our theta was... 19 point, you know, three something. So we could figure out how can we rotate here to get to the maximum shear. So if our theta, which we solved for was this. So I need to solve. So remember, we had a two times our theta and we want to rotate basically to 90 degrees in this two theta space. So 90, so actually, Let's do minus 90 equals, um, actually we can figure out, equals two times theta. So this is our, our real, uh, what doesn't it look, doesn't like. There we go. So I'm just solving for, again, the angle, right? So because if I rotate, I'm looking to find this angle here, that's just gonna be 90 minus two theta. But remember, this is all in two theta space. So whatever this is is going to be equal to my, you know, my two theta rotation. So that's where that we're solving for the two theta comes in. This is the hard part about more, more circle. It's in that two theta space. But if you can keep it all together, and that was negative because why? It's a clockwise rotation. And what does that match? Minus 25.6, minus 25.67. I love these problems because they're always going to get the same answer. Now, how are we going to solve? So we've been able to solve this, 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 and this. I can also solve, or we can also solve, what's if we took this stress state and we, we did a clockwise rotation, so this way, of 15 real degrees, which is going to be times 2, which is going to be 30 degrees, we can solve and get that value, right? So we can rotate and create another stress state that looks like probably like this, that's rotated here a 30 degrees. And we can now use that to solve for unknowns, right? We still know our radius. So for example, this would be my radius. This angle now would be what? It'd be our two times 19.3 to nine plus 30. So, and then we can use that to solve for whatever this, what this value is. And actually we can do that right now. So we can go ahead. So actually I'm gonna keep, so our angle is gonna be this, 19 times two plus 30. So that's our angle. So now we're gonna do solve sine of this angle and make sure whatever you're doing make sure we're in degree you're operating in degree mode so you see the degree you can do times you can just do degree you know it's, it's not a, it's not a big deal um so if, for example we can just double check this so what is sine of zero degree and then sine of 90 degree so good um so we don't have to put that there but we can do that. So sine is equal to opposite, which we're solving for over hypotenuse, which is our radius. So we can solve for that. So we get five. Is e so we see that that value is 5.961. So this is, if we go back, 
So that would be solving for this point right here. This would be representative of my, uh, basically, if you look at here, that would be my tau 1, 2, um, the new tau 1, 2 prime. So we can double check that. So 15 degrees clockwise rotation. And if we look at tau 1, 2, 5.96. 5.96. Very nice. Where's the, where's the 5.96? 5.9641. Excellent. And then we can do the same thing and solve for the cosine. So, because I need to find, that gives me this point here, but in, I need to find what is this point in the triangle, and I could find in the opposite direction as well. So, I need to find what's that cosine. So, I can do the same thing, just solve for cosine. Now, the key thing here is it's not this value, it's the center minus that value, and then the center plus that value. The center plus that value. 12.3, 7.66. 12.3, Isn't it amazing when a plan comes together? Now, this is great. We are able to visualize this and solve this um, much more intuitively, but I really don't like to use more circle for that type of problem where I have to do a rotation and then I have to do a bunch of geometry because there's lots of mistakes that can go along the way. Um, instead, we are going to introduce some linear algebra. Don't be afraid. This is our friend. This is the approach I would strongly recommend um, because it's very intuitive, but we're going to be able to solve a lot of those problems with math and very, 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 um, very, very, and still be very intuitive, uh, and also with very minimal lines of code. So I'll see you then. Thanks. Bye.